Hey everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel called Living in Hayward, Wisconsin. My name is Audrey Miller. I'm the broker owner of the Northwest Wisconsin Realty Team and I invite you to come along with me today as I talk about mistakes that I've made in real estate. You know, everybody always loves a good story about something that went wrong, right? <laughs> And while these are more uh, general statements, I know that any career that you're in, you get more and more experience the longer that you're in it. And I've made some mistakes along the way. And I thought I'd share a few of those with you today. And hopefully this will help you from making the same mistakes yourself. Hi, thanks for joining me today on my YouTube channel where we talk about all things related to living in Hayward and the real estate market in the Hayward area. Again, I'm Audrey Miller and we're based out of Hayward. Main Street is the location of our office. Feel free to subscribe, like, share my channel, uh, comment below if you have any thoughts or any real estate experiences that you'd like to share. But I'm gonna go over seven mistakes that I've made in my real estate career to date. Thankfully, as time goes on and I've done hundreds of transactions now, the mistakes get to be less and less, but you never can get too sure of yourself, uh, but I do try to always do my best. So mistake number one that I've made is assuming that someone understands that multiple offers mean that you should come in with your highest and best from the beginning and that you will only get one chance. Let me explain a little bit further. In the last few years, um, as of this recording of June 2024. It's still relatively common. But the last few years, especially, we've had a lot of multiple offer situations where there was more than one buyer who was putting in an offer on a property. And the way that it typically works, it's not that there's a set way, but the way that that typically works, when you know there's multiple offers, a buyer should just come in with their highest and best offer knowing they only have one chance to put something in front of the seller. You know, people will always use the term bidding war, but really these days, it's not so much of a bidding war as just putting your best foot forward and it gets accepted or it gets rejected. And I've made the mistake before of thinking that a buyer understands that and then they submitted an offer even though they knew there were multiple offers. And then when another person got the accepted offer, they were like, oh, I thought I was gonna get another chance to put in you know, a higher offer or counter my own offer. So I always try to make sure to explain that to people now so that they don't have the misconception that they may have a second opportunity in a multiple offer situation. Situation. Mistake number two that I've made is thinking that a buyer automatically understands that once you sign on the dotted line, you are in a legally binding contract. The offer to purchase contract in the state of Wisconsin is legally binding. You can't just vacate the contract for a reason not related to a contingency or condition of the offer. And I've made the mistake in the past of thinking that every buyer understands that. And then someone a day or two later saying, oh, we don't wanna buy the place anymore. Um, we wanna get out, we wanna earn money back or we don't want to submit our earnest money and going okay i thought that was kind of self-explanatory that once you sign that contract you are obligated to make the purchase aside from you know something happening with a contingency of the offer so that's one that i try to now make sure to say to every buyer you know once you sign this you are committed to purchasing this property generally speaking mistake number three is thinking i know what a buyer will want to have fixed by the seller in relation to inspection reports so home inspection contingency is always kind of a, a second negotiation during the buying process if there are defects or items that need to be cured or fixed. And early on, I used to get a hold of the buyer and say, okay, here's the things that I think look like they might be of concern. Here are the defects. And I'd kind of talk them through it, putting my opinion onto the buyer. And I learned over the years that the report is very comprehensive. It's 30 or 40 pages long. It lists usually by color coding, whether something is considered a defect, needs further evaluation, you know, a maintenance item. So it's very self-explanatory to a buyer. So a long time ago, I realized the buyer can review it and they can let me know what is important to them. People vary quite a lot in what they think should be fixed, what they're concerned about, what they're not concerned about, and how much compensation they would want from the seller if there are defects or what they would want to have the seller take care of. So less is more when it comes to that and I let the buyer take the lead on what they feel is important to have fixed or have compensation for uh, prior to closing. Number four, mistake that I've made is thinking that a seller is firm on price just because they say when they list 
I'm firm on price. I try to take people at their word and assume that they mean what they say. However, what I've learned is that often sellers, when faced with an actual offer that somebody puts down on paper and it's not quite what they were asking, a lot of times there's a little more wiggle room than what a seller indicates to their agent. And I think this is because you kind of start to consider, okay, I can maybe get no money for my property or I can get 10,000 less than I was asking, for example. So I've kind of learned that when a seller says, I'm firm on price, they may or may not be quite as firm as maybe even they think they are sometimes. So always best to just check, have a buyer write an offer and submit it and see what happens from there. All right, mistake number five that I've made in real estate is putting too much time into a buyer who wasn't actually serious. One of the things that I've learned um, a number of years ago now is that if somebody is a serious buyer, they will be responsive, they'll reach out, they'll ask questions about property. If they don't respond to you or they don't kind of take some initiative during the buying process, they're probably not a very serious buyer. Same goes for if you give them a few to-do tasks, such as uh, suggesting that they work on obtaining a pre-approval or that they maybe start looking online to become familiar with the market. If they don't take those steps, they're probably not too serious. Now, I'm not saying that that person couldn't later become a serious buyer, but I've learned over the years where to invest my time and to read the signs of whether somebody is actually serious about looking at property or if they're just having fun driving around on the weekends and seeing houses or land. Number six mistake that I've made is and this was very early on in my career, probably within the first six to nine months, is just believing someone when they said, oh yes, I'm pre-approved or I'm able to qualify you know, to buy this property. I've learned long ago to ask for proof of that. The people who don't have the ability to qualify are often the ones who will tell you that they do and then not follow through with providing that pre-approval when you ask for it. So while I don't make it a prerequisite necessarily to show property, um, you know, to have a pre-approval to show property, I will not show people property more than once without knowing that they have the ability to make the purchase. It's just a waste of everybody's time, myself and the buyer's time, to be going and looking at properties if they don't truly have the ability to make the purchase. Plus it helps to inform how much the buyer can afford if they get a hold of a lender and get a pre-approval. And then number seven that I have on my list of mistakes that I've made is thinking that a buyer knows what they want. I cannot tell you how many times I've had conversations with buyers and they'll say, okay, these are my criteria. I want to be on a 300 acre lake or more. I want to have three bedrooms, two bathrooms. I need to have land, a little bit of acreage with the property. I want to be in this location. And many, many times as we start looking at properties and buyers see things, all of a sudden they're like, hey, I want to go see this property. And they've told me in the past they will not do anything with high elevation. Turns out the property has high elevation, but they love the house so much or they love the location or the setting. So I've learned that a lot of times buyers are actually figuring out what they want during the viewing process and working with me. And that is completely fine. I totally understand it. But, you know, if I try to just take a buyer at their word and assume that they want to stay within the box that they put for themselves, a lot of times it ends up changing. That's not all of the mistakes I've made, but those are some things that I've learned over the years. Like I said, with any career, the more experience you have, you bring to the table for your clients. There's so many things that when I first started, I had to learn along the way. And I'm still learning on a weekly basis, but there's a large inventory of experiences to draw from at this point and the mistakes you make end up helping you to be better in the future. So as always, if you're looking to buy or sell, feel free to reach out to me. I'm Audrey Miller with Northwest Wisconsin Realty Team out of Hayward, and I hope you enjoy my channel. Feel free, like I said, to comment, subscribe, share, or like, and I look forward to maybe meeting you sometime.